I want you to meet Vianne King. At age 23, a virus left Vianne physically disabled and dependent on a wheelchair. But that hasn't stopped her. She lives a life of resiliency whenever faced with adversity, and it is contagious. Watch this. Are you looking for the courage to face your giants? A life-altering virus, infidelity, and trapped in a prison of fear. These were only a few of my giants. What are yours? Vian shares all of this with one purpose in mind, of charting a path to hope. It is my prayer that you see those giants in your life fall, and that you too can move forward in total freedom with a courage that is contagious. Are you ready? Well, Vianne's book, Contagious Courage, is a challenge to find the courage to break through your fears and failures, to see how you too can move forward in total freedom. Joining me now from Edmonton is Vianne King. Your newly released <laughs> book, Contagious Courage, it poses a very important question. Are you looking for courage to face your giants? That's a great question. Vianne, take us back to some of the giants that you had to face in your journey toward courage. Well, where to begin and starting with that virus, that was a major giant that led me on a path to face even more giants. Loss of identity, uh, will my fiance want me? That was a giant. Will my life matter? Infidelity, right? Uh, but you know what, Lori, the Goliath of all my giants, you know, you're going to find this hard to believe, was realizing I was a codependent people pleaser. Wow. And not only, not only did I, I not know it was there, but when I did see it, I never thought that giant would fall. Wow. And never, never mind the giant of self-doubt, unworthiness, shame. I could keep going, but I want to leave you. The point is, it doesn't matter, like, what giant you're facing. I had to come to the realization that I couldn't do it in my own strength. And I think that people miss that because they see people slaying giants and they don't realize that they can, but the key is you can't do it in your own strength. Yeah, isn't that the truth, Vianne? I mean, for many of us looking at your story, we'd see a wheelchair, you know, you share, you know, your story, your struggle in your marriage. I mean, there are some significant events that have taken place in your life, but you are sharing with me that it's like an internal struggle that actually was the bigger giants. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I think that if we don't change our perspective uh, off of our own strength and realize that there's even more strength available, that that giant slaying strength is available to you, yeah. we won't be able to move forward. And that's yeah. that's really where the courage is, just to believe that it is available to everyone. Your book is so transparent and full of wisdom and you encourage others to lean into discomfort and ditch the I can't mentality. <laughs> wow. And choose courage to overcome emotional and physical challenges. So tell us, Vianne, how do you choose courage? Uh -huh. Can, can I ask you a question, a rhetorical question, Lori? Sure. Um, during COVID, have you been forced to find another way to do something? Maybe it's been communicating or another way just to get through the day. And maybe other people can uh, relate to that as well. Um, most, but you have two options. Yeah. You most definitely, say, I'll say yes to that, want. yeah. Right? Yeah. And you can say, nope, I can't and I don't want to. Or you can embrace that discomfort and find another way. And for me, when, when I was paralyzed, I spent the majority of my time and energy focusing on all the things that I couldn't do, saying I can't, fixating on all the things I didn't like about myself being stuck because I couldn't do anything the way I did before. And to be honest, I didn't want to. Yeah. And another example of that is even just something very simple, but it was very uh, impactful in my life. I didn't want to drive or do anything until I could do it the way I did before. I so desperately wanted to be independent and feel good about myself, yet I refused to do something differently than I did it before. Mm. I had this perspective that doing it differently made me less of a person. Wow. So this perspective, this perspective was more paralyzing than my disability or more limiting than the chair I'm sitting in. Right. So the choice to change and adapt to another way um, to drive gave me more independence. So I had to push past 
some of those self-imposed ideas about myself and my situation, yeah. or I would never be open to find another way. So that was uncomfortable. Yes. Gaining my independence in these areas after being told that I would never, right? Right. That was life changing for me. Right. But you know what? People don't generally like change. But here's the thing. So true. God, God, right? God knows there's another way. And if we, ex if we don't accept God's way, then we'll remain stuck. But I found that not only is there another way, mm. there's a better way and it's God's way. And once we discover this better way, we must be willing then to choose courage, be willing to lean into discomfort and ditch the I can't mentalities. And that's what I did. Yeah. And that is what choosing courage looked like for me. Wow. And I can see why you won Miss Wheelchair Canada. I'm just saying. That is a powerful message and you embody that, you're living that. So what would you say, Vian, to anyone who's stuck in the past, they can't break free from their own trauma or their choices and maybe they're carrying an I can't mentality? Lori, I, um, every time I get asked this, it, it always strikes me because I'm a little further removed from my trauma. And so there's always those lies that you can't speak into someone else's trauma. And while I don't know all there is to know about trauma, I'm not an expert, but I remember standing in a room surrounded by people who literally were walking through trauma. It was in a mental health unit. And I tell you, I have never felt more small. After I spoke, I had one gentleman, he asked me, said, how, did you start loving yourself? He shared with me why he didn't love himself and wondered when could he? And so with anyone experiencing trauma, I would say, I don't know when you're gonna start moving forward. I don't know when you're gonna start loving yourself. But what I said to that man that day, I said, I looked at him as if there was no one else in the room. And I said, you know what? I pray that it is today that you start to love yourself let someone love you where you're at yeah and you know in my situation before i even believed it or or felt it i started declaring truths over myself mm -hmm. stop believing lies about myself yeah you know and that is how you start yeah just you know let someone love you where you are but most of all yeah. choose to love yourself yeah what and a know Oh, that you can. That's a powerful message, and it's all through your book, Via, and you're such a clear teacher and equipper. I encourage people to get your book, not just for your story, but to help move through. Final thought, real quick, what do you hope your audience does in response to this book? Uh, I'll just say something really quickly that um, every giant you face is an opportunity for an even bigger victory, and I, I pray that my story and the little glimpse that you've got will just prove that. But at the end of this book, I, I want you to know that you are loved, you are worthy, and believe you are enough. But also, you know what? Don't be afraid to let your real self show. Yeah. Let's take off our mask and open our hearts and start moving forward in freedom and courage. Beautiful. Well, for more about Vianne King, go to 700club.ca. Thank you, Vianne. Thank you, Lori.